guys and welcome to Top Channel 111. So we are continuing our series on uh, making motion graphics in Blender and uh, making commercials in Blender. And uh, today we're going to be doing uh, this kind of, uh, I don't know, lipstick or perfume uh, render. Uh, you can see we're using some particle systems and uh, to have more control over the particles, I'm using geometry nodes because it's really hard to control particles using the particle system, especially if you want the particles to go around a curve like you're seeing in this example. Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing here. Project files are going to be on my Gamera page, Patreon and uh, all links are going to be in the description. Okay, first things first, let's make the flower. So I'm going to start with a uh, plane like this and just add a subdivision surface. I'm just going to scale it up like that and uh, apply the subdivisions. Turn on proportional editing, select some of these edges and just pull them up. I'm going to go to my texture folders and look for a leaf texture. I'm going to use something like this. Let me unwrap this and uh, I can bring in my texture and just make sure that uh, I map the image correctly. Yeah, something like that. Let, let me try this. I'll switch this yeah i like the detailed edges better so i'm going to use that now we we can use this as best roughness i'm also going to use some translucence blend this with a transparency this alpha can be the transparency since we're in ev for the shader we want to turn on alpha clip i have to switch this around and we have our leaf uh we can make it a little bit more detailed uh, by just adding a bump that's good enough give it a bit of color add a reroute node add a mix node change this to color make this a bit reddish add a math node to make this less reflective it's so we have that let's make the wind effect are the leaves being blown away first add a plane uh, where i'm going to instance these particles switch to geometry nodes and start instancing uh, these leaves add uh distribute points on faces turn those into instances that and uh, what we want is to instance our leaf onto there so something like that uh we need a random scale and uh, it should be small like yeah around there and we also need some random rotation so let's do another random value by the same vector connect that to the rotation i want mostly because these are going to be on the ground we want it to be mostly rotated in the z direction so we don't need a lot of rotation in the x and y multiply uh, so that i can control the scale even further so something like that and uh, i'm going to increase the density but i don't want an even distribution like that so i'm going to bring in a noise texture and use that as a mask so i'll add that there and use a compare node uh, to create a mask out of this so i can delete uh, some of the points we have so you can see we have a lot of points here if i use a noise texture i can delete some of them i'm just going to use a ramp just to control the scale i think yeah i can use that as our selection as a selection now let me create another plane uh, that is going to be our ground i'm just going to use my asset library to search for a concrete material uh, let me try something darker maybe something like this yeah i think uh, that's good enough all right so this is what we have let me turn on some ambient occlusion so that we can see everything occluding so for the wind we're just going to use uh, an icosphere like this animate it uh, to just have the direction of the wind so it starts from there and uh, actually let's start from here we can just move this around so if we play back we can see how the our wind is going to blow we can come back to the particles and uh, we are going to just push this a bit uh, create some space here and uh, we're going to use a set position between our points and our instances so now we want to animate the wind change any the offset you can see i can move i can influence the position of uh, the particles but i want to influence only the particles close to this uh, mesh object we have or our icosphere so i'm going to bring in the icosphere and i'm going to use the proximity node to create a mask of how close the, the different instances are to, to our particles so if i change to at points or to instances you can see we have created a, a mask uh, that uh, just gives us uh, how close each of these particles are to our uh, to, to our object so and uh, this mask should be animated if you change this from original to relative uh, you should be able to see uh, the animation work here you can see the so if i use this to influence the position so for example if i want the wind to blow to the right like that i can just 
use a combine x y x y z goes in that direction so like that let's see let's see let's see yeah that goes like that and i just scale that vector using vector math but uh using the mask we have just created uh, that means that only the particles within this range are going to be affected by our wind so if i add uh say another a scale node i can influence uh, that vector uh, like that so it's doing the opposite of what we want instead of applying the wind to areas close to uh, the mesh it's applying it to the instances that are far from our, our wind object so to, to flip this around i'm going to use a color ramp and uh, just flip this around and uh, i can even just have something like that so uh, whenever i have this I and mean, you, you can essentially see the wind happening but the problem is that uh, when the wind object goes away the particles go back to their uh, old position, which is not something we, we want. We want them to continue blowing away. We need a way to maintain uh, the mask. So if I look at the mask, you can see that uh, it fades away as the wind object goes away. Uh, we want it to be persistent, to be persistent. So we're going to use simulation nodes uh, for that. We want to create a persistent mask. So we need to come back here and uh, just find where and have all of this set up within uh, the simulation nodes. All of these, actually, let me just recreate it for you so that you can see what I did. It's going to be much easier to understand. So we basically have gotten rid of the mask and now we want to regenerate it. So I'm going to bring these particles back in here and uh, just have my output out here. And I also do the points just out there. So if we go back here, simulate, look at this nothing has changed everything is still exactly as we had it before uh, but now we want to create a mask again we were using the icosphere to create uh, the mask using a proximity node and uh, yeah so this is supposed to be relative uh, this is going to be our target and uh, we need to export this mask through the output and uh, then so that it can be added back to the mask creating uh, basically an, a loop and a, a persistent mass. So we, I'm going to just get this distance, put it here. And if I preview that, and let me make sure that uh, we're looking at the right thing. Instances. Okay, so if I play back, you can see we still get our mask, but it's not being added into the loop. We need to create a continuous loop that goes around. So I have to bring this back. So if we bring this mask, I want to just look at my particles. Yeah, so I want to look at my particles. You can see, uh, if you just look at the particles, you can see our mask. If I bring this mask again into the loop and add it back to itself using a math node, so I just add this back to the original and then so that this mask goes in and then it's added to itself. I can see that uh, it fades out. Yeah, we need to flip this around so I can use a ramp. Yeah, so you can see creating something persistent. Uh, the mask stays there and doesn't just fade away when the wind object moves. Uh, I want this to be smaller. Yeah, something like that. Now, if we look at this, we can again start setting up our set position to have the wind activated. So I'm just going to use a uh, combine X. Now, this time I want to have some, uh, to have the winds be blown up a bit and then to the right as well. And uh, again, we use the vector math to influence that but uh, we need yeah we already we don't need to flip it because we have already flipped the mask here so if i play back you can see that uh, our particles are getting blown away uh, i think the z component is a bit too much so i'm going to just have them a bit like that so great 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 and uh, another thing we could do is just rotate rotate the instances so and uh, since we already have this mask i can just do a vector since we already have this vector 
that is influencing influencing the particles i can just put that directly into the rotation and uh, since we have some random rotation influencing here i can just use a vector math to add this vector to the rotation and you can see that uh, these get rotated as they're being blown away which is a nice effect uh, if the rotation is too much we can just scale it down a bit maybe 0.5 to make it yeah more reasonable and uh, that's how you can create a wind effect so from there uh, you can create this pile of leaves and then this uh, particles following a path like that a curve path like that uh, so let's do that first let's create a pile uh, i'm just going to use a plane give it a subdivisions and uh, apply that subdivision i'm just going to extrude up just create something like that uh, and uh, again set up a new geometry nodes we can distribute points on faces we need a lot of points and uh, we're going to bring in our leaf and instance on points and then connect this as the instance of course we are going to randomize everything else uh, we need a random value for the scale and a random value for the rotation like that we, we have a lot of gaps here but uh, that is something we can solve later by just duplicating uh, this and uh, just adding another pile inside and uh, this version could instead of using distribute points on faces we can first turn this into a volume and then distribute in a volume uh, so that we have uh, the points inside uh, the volume so uh, why am I not oh yeah just need to bring the density up now you can see our pile yeah that's how you do that you can go to this and uh, we need these to be blown away following a curve so i'm going to add a curve object in a way that i want so maybe something like this okay so that's our curve and uh, i'm going to come into the to this bring in my curve yeah make some room here we can have these points follow the curve by using a sample index and use the point on each index to influence the position of uh, the curves so you get the position of every point on your curve uh, let's have that and uh, use that to influence so if we use a set position here we can use it to influence the position of uh, the curves so uh, this should be relative so if i play with the index I can see that uh, the curve is trying to the our particles are trying to move on the plane and actually let me try this on the offset yeah you can see this more clearly that uh, the curve our particles are trying to follow the curve one issue we are having is that uh, we don't have a lot of points on our curve we have like three points that's why they're jump the particles are jumping to those points to only those points let me first remove these particles so that we can look at this uh, one thing we could do is uh, just resample uh, the curve so that we have uh, many points that way our pile can be can move around the, can move on the path more smoothly and uh, you can also use this value to animate the curves but uh, we don't want to move the entire pile we want to move in video vertices if you put the index into the index here you can influence just particle per particle and uh, have them move along the path uh, like that yeah so you can see how you can animate this with this uh, count resample count or you can just trim the curve by using a trim curve node uh, so if i do this it also it will also give you the same animation so you can use a combination of these particles to just uh, do this and and uh, you can also use uh, this vector here to influence the rotation so uh, since we already have a random rotation here we can add a vector math uh, that uh, just to add some rotation to the particles as they are moving so you can see it's, it's uh, can amplify the, that by using a scale so let's do something like four or five and just Yeah, so we get a nice rotation like that or you can just use this and uh, we get that nice animation 
yeah so that's how i did the wind and the particles I like that uh, the, then for the lighting yeah so for the lighting i had to use blender 4.0 uh, because i need to do uh light separation uh these the bottle has its own lighting compared to the lights you can see this gets back lighting but the uh, but the leaves themselves don't get any back lighting uh, because I'm, I'm using light grouping and uh, so i added this uh area light here see and uh created um, a volume object so that we can have uh, that spotlight you see that in the final animation i also have these god rays animated uh, you can see uh, somewhere 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 yeah you can see the god rays are animated there uh, to do that i added at the end here this uh, this light blocker uh, like a gobo it's just a plane with a few faces uh, removed and i just rotate it uh, which blocks the lights a bit and creating those gold rays or shadows or volume shad volumetric shadows the the volume shader itself th there isn't much here uh, but uh, the only thing i did is animate the density because at uh, in some areas if i kept the density very high if i kept the density high then uh, especially at close-ups it wouldn't look very good so i animated it uh reduced it a bit so that we can clearly see what's going on and then brought it back yeah so when i needed to have the good rays show and uh, faded it out and uh, faded it out all the other lights just so we can have the bottle the product stand out uh what other thing that's mostly it and another thing i did here uh without this cardboard I, everything looked too bright so i also used it to do two things uh for the volumetric shadows and also uh, to add some uh, shadow, shadow cast uh, to kind of compose uh, the shot closely so I added in some shadow detail there uh, to help with the composition if you want to learn more product animation like this here are some of my previous videos i did for your viewing and if you're struggling with materials or if you have a project deadline and you don't want to make materials from scratch because they can take a lot of time to get them right you can try out smart material which is a very popular add-on for creating materials uh, that take geometry into consideration and uh, yeah uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video